I've owned three different telescopes made by Celestron. This one is my favorite one so far. It has its quirks, but overall I would say it's a pretty good telescope. Let's go over the pros and cons of the AstroPhi 130mm. By the way, this review is brought to you by my Zodiac stickers. Learn your favorite constellations with labeled stars and related deep sky objects, and they make great gifts too. You can snag them on Etsy, link in the description below. You can also see how I drew them with an informative video here on YouTube. And now back to the review. I was amazed at how easy this telescope was to put together. It took like maybe 20 minutes and half of that was pretty much just opening all the packaging that it came in. In fact, the instruction manual said nothing about collimation, which was a pleasant surprise. And indeed, I got clear views right out of the box. So that was exciting, especially given that I tried and failed to collimate the Celestron 127mm EQ telescope. It doesn't, it doesn't collimate. Uh, so I was glad I didn't have to do that with this one. The red dot finder scope on this thing is pretty great in that you don't have to deal with reverse images when you're looking through it like you do with some other finder scopes. Just make sure that you turn off the red dot before you put it away for the night to save that battery. The dials on this thing make aligning your finder scope a breeze. The only thing you need to get started is eight AA batteries and a phone. You can also use it with a laptop, but I haven't because the phone is just more convenient. With the phone, however, I did have some connectivity issues that you should be aware of. On my Android device, when trying to connect to the Wi-Fi so that you can control it, you have to wait for it to say no internet connection before you can click connect anyway. If you don't click that button, then it'll look like your phone's connected, but it won't actually be connected, so it won't work. And then the other issue I had is my phone would occasionally drop the connection in the middle of using it when it was idle for a little bit. That did happen more than once, and I read reviews of it happening to other people as well. So it is a known issue. However, last time I took this telescope out, I didn't have any connectivity issues. So I don't really know what happened there. I don't know what the deal is, but um, that could be an issue. If it does happen to you, I couldn't get my phone to reconnect unless I first disconnected from the Wi-Fi and then went into my settings and chose the option that says, forget this network. So I had to restart from scratch every time that it dropped. That is my biggest issue with this telescope, but when the app does work, the auto go to feature that moves the telescope automatically for you is so nice. Now it's not always perfect at automatically centering the object in the eyepiece, but that really just depends on how well you align it when you get started. So, you know, just take your time doing that and it should work pretty good. And either way, it is really nice to have the telescope get all the way, you know, close to the thing you want to look at without having to even touch it. Then when it gets there, you can fine tune it as needed. That being said, you can't move your telescope after you align it to the stars and that because then it'll forget where it is. So make sure that you set up in a clear space where you can see everything you're going to want to see so that you don't have to move your telescope later. I have ran into that issue. A building was in the way of Cassiopeia. I wanted to look at it and I just didn't, I, I couldn't, I didn't want to take the time to move it and then realign it. So I didn't do that. Now this phone attachment is pretty ingenious, which doubles as the dust cover. You take out this orange thing and then you can put your phone in here align the camera up with that hole in there, um, then put the eyepiece in here, and then put that on the telescope and take pictures with your camera. Phone cameras aren't great for taking pictures anyway. Like they're, you could do the moon or bright planets, but other than that, it's not ideal. Um, and it is pretty tricky to align your camera with this hole when you're in the dark and get it all set up. So, I mean, it's kind of a hassle, but it is pretty nice bonus. So far, I've only really taken a picture of the moon using this thing, but it's pretty cool. I was pretty shocked when I first saw Jupiter and Saturn through this thing. It has good light gathering capabilities and good magnification, so the views were clear and wow, you can see the rings of Saturn. You can see the moons of Jupiter pretty clearly. I've also seen some star clusters through this, both open star clusters and globular clusters, which kind of look like fuzzy stars. Both are pretty cool to look at. I haven't seen any nebula through it yet, um, but I'm sure there are a few that you could see. This scope is pretty big, but it's also fairly light, so it's not too hard to move around. I also really like the narrations in the app. You can listen to descriptions of objects as you observe them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The one recommendation that I would have is that I wish there was a dedicated control that you could plug into this thing. That would eliminate the connectivity issues and then also solve my other problem, which it can be hard to control this using a touch screen because you don't know where the buttons are. 
especially when you're looking through the telescope to try and fine tune it. Um, there's up and down side to side buttons, but without being able to feel them, it can be kind of tricky. So a, a control would eliminate that because you could feel the buttons. Without that, the controls on this touch screen really do take some getting used to at first. So final notes. The, the connectivity and the controls can be a little quirky sometimes. I have read reviews of other people struggling with it too. However, I have been able to get it to work, so I'm doing okay, personally. The views are great. It's easy to assemble. It's lightweight. The auto tracking is super helpful when you can get it to work. The finder scope is awesome. The app is informative and the uh, camera mount thing is a bonus. I've even used this telescope without digital controls. Now you can't rotate it side to side without those digital controls, but you can maneuver it up and down like this by hand. So if you're in a pinch and you don't have a phone or you can't get it to work, you can just rotate the tripod, move up and down to find your thing. Rotating the tripod isn't great for fine tuning your view, but it is possible. I've got it to work. So there's always that. This is the most expensive telescope that I've had so far, and it is by far my favorite. I'd give it four out of five stars, the main issue being that connectivity problem that takes some troubleshooting and getting used to. Compared to the other two I've had, I'd rate them in this order. The Celestron Astrophy 133mm at $469 being number one. Second place would be the Travelscope 70mm at $99. And then third place, the Celestron EQ 127mm at about $179. Don't get that one. It's not very good, hard to collimate, and so it's difficult to get good views. It's heavy. Um, this one's just way better. I mean, it is more expensive, so that makes sense, but uh, yeah, that would be my order for these three. I've made more detailed reviews on those other ones if you're interested, but this would be my number one recommendation until I get a better one, that is, someday. I don't know, I'd probably stick with this one for a while though because I really am enjoying it and it's working well. Thank you for watching. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below or let me know what you think of this telescope if you've tried it. I wish you clear skies to enjoy that beautiful night sky. Most of all, take the time to do the things that you enjoy and remember to smile.